I said that works right. That's how an urchin should function. I have a better idea. Two Nautilus. I'm such a genius. There's gonna be nothing here, but I'm gonna put something here just for the sake of it having something here to look at. Yeah, I placed I placed a Nautilus here. What? Why, why do you not appear? I don't know what the hell do I want to do with my life and with this level. Today, I'm going to design a water level for my game, Frago Plus. And you guys have to sit through this miserable process with me. Let's go! So anyway, I just wanna briefly showcase the process of me coding an urchin. Enemy. It doesn't have anything in it yet, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't behave. But basically I want it to float up to an underwater. I also want it to be able to move around in tracks. Like, let me just set up... Oh, what the hell. Hold on. There. I want it to be able to move around in tracks for the underwater section. Diagonal. It's not the right one. That and that. And let's head on to the code editor. So here we are in the code editor. I set up the basics. Let me give it a little bit of attributes. So first of all, let's think about the properties of an urchin. Do you think urchins are edible? I mean there's spikes on them. It probably makes it hard to eat an urchin. But I know damn well that there's maniacs out there who feast on them. Well, yeah, that looks like... That looks like it hurts if you try to lick it. Can be caught. Set to false. Um, harmful to... Tongue. Set to true. And we also want it to... Move on tracks, so... I can give it a trackable behavior. It should stick to a track. For a behavior, let's do... If it's on track, do nothing. If not. If uh, underwater, Y speed um, increases upwards. Else, gravity. Okay, it's missing the attribute track speed. Yeah, that definitely looks like it works. It's doing its thing and it's not edible. I said that works right. That's how an urchin should function. I decided to do a little bit of tweaking off camera and even added some animations. I made it so it doesn't splash around that much when it's floating at the surface. And uh, I make it animate. And it still hurts. Let's get to level design. So I already made this. This is the, the beginning. There's gonna be a little urchin that eventually flows to the surface giving it a little introduction to what's to come. Also two of them here and player is gonna be led to this door here which leads to the next room. And this is where the action actually begins. This is where the player starts to um, get familiar with water controls. So the interesting thing is Froggle actually has water controls since the very beginning. I just haven't really made use of it. Uh, it actually kind of controls like frog suits from Mario 3, so I think that nails, nails let down for anyone wondering. Still, he cannot uh, use his tongue all vertically or diagonally, only horizontally, even though he moves in all directions. And here's a little bit of lily pad action here. Player gets to take the top path and deal with yet another gym. I really like gym. Or Goldie Bottom Root, where they are met with Susie. Yes, that's the name of this enemy. Here is the necessary path to take to the next area, which I have made, which features three urchins that move on a circular track. And then 
player officially head to the next area which I have yet to make and this is where we begin I assume. There's also an empty room which I have no idea what to do with yet but uh, we're just gonna leave that there. This I plan to have it be a fully underwater section, a descending one that is. So let's make everything. We're gonna worry about the visuals later, right now I'm just gonna click and drag all the turrets out and not worry about it. So the funny thing is, um, there's actually a dedicated water tile that dictates whether the entity is underwater or not, but anyway. I actually have no idea what the hell to do next. Alright, let's make the walls. Don't forget to remove the one on the outside, not do that, uh, I don't wanna do that. So this is a descending section. We wanna have level design at least to the bottom. And, hmm. So we already introduced the urchin mechanics here. Hold up, I have an idea. So there are two types of way to use the urchin. One is to put them on a track. One is to just make them naturally float up to the water, which I have a cool idea for. Why don't I just use that for this section? I'm gonna put one air urchin here, which isn't gonna do much, but one here and one here. They're gonna flow to the top, which signifies what's going to happen in the next area. And I'm gonna make some paths. like this formation. I'm gonna make a gate. Let me borrow this tile from here. So there's gonna be some form of gate here. This is gonna be a bridge that will collapse eventually. And when that happens, there's gonna be dangerous urchins floating to the top which Frago is going to dodge. Now I'm gonna put a block here which has one singular coin in that. And what I'm gonna do is give it a trigger, like so. And what I'm going to do is make this bridge have also be able to be triggered as well as send signals to one another. So there's a really interesting signal system going on. Basically, there are three types of them. The red dot at the bottom left signifies that it's going to send a signal whenever that happens to the nearby tiles. The second one means it's gonna do the same but it disappears afterwards. The third one starts out as an invisible tile which also carries signals but after that it appears when the signal is carried. We're gonna do that, we're gonna change all of the bridges to the second kind. So then when the player hit this block, the urchins are gonna float up. Let me test this out a bit. Before we test, we actually have to fill this room with water tiles. And then we save. So we're in the first room, we see the urchins float up, get a bit of sense of how they work. And then here's a little bit of challenges, little coin grabbing thing. Which isn't a challenge, but it's, it takes a bit of effort, okay. A little bit of urgent action is going on. And then we're gonna be entering this door, which leads to the room that we just made. And just as I suspected, they're gonna to float up. And I'm going to hit this bug in order to progress. And then, just like that, the urchins float up and the player has to dodge it. Feels like things are working the way I want it to, but I feel like this room is too too large. There's too much empty space. So let me shorten it a little bit. Yeah, that seems, seems about right. So how should I go about this? Let me actually fill in the water first. This is great. I like where this is going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it would probably be better if I actually made a tag that would just make an entire room underwater. 
I'm gonna make another section dedicated to this gay thing here. Gate thing, not gay thing. <laughs> so this one should be a little bit easier I feel like. Oh yeah, this is the point where I should probably put the first checkpoint in. So there we have it. Descending matter, we keep placing terrain. I call them paths, but they're more like terrain. Paths just kind of form as a result. I should probably get around to make actual auto tile instead of this makeshift one. It's already a pain coding list, but I feel like a proper one would be beneficial if I want to make something bigger. But Froggo Plus is just gonna be a little thing, so this will do. And what do I do here again? <laughs> I will probably place like... Okay, there's... I haven't used Nautilus. They're kind of like urchins, but worse. Nautilus, if you didn't watch my past devlog, they move up and down on the water and basically it. Which is completely achievable using just urchins and on a track. <laughs> so it's kind of a weird enemy, but I'm gonna put it here just for the sake of immersion. And variety, of course. We're gonna put more signal bridges, like so. Put more urchins. And uh, it doesn't have to be that big, so... It's just gonna be like this. They're gonna have to swim away. And I plan to make two more of this bridge gizmo thing. Actually, just one more, but... Maybe three in total and each of them gets difficult than the last. So yeah, I'm a game designer. Should probably put a few breadcrumbs here to let players know we're gonna be descending. They'll probably know anyway due to the camera movement. Anyway, we keep descending. This place I actually gonna use some track urchins. Let me map this out. Maybe not, maybe. I have a better idea. Two Nautilus. I'm such a genius. And here we're going to reach another underwater bridge. Another collapsing bridge that's gonna be a little bit more difficult. So this time, let me borrow this. We're gonna be in a tight space. And this time, player have to swim up. They don't have the option to swim to the side anymore, so they gotta swim up. Let me put the urchins down. I don't actually know if player can dodge if, dodge this from the side, but just in case, I'm gonna put them on the side. I'm gonna put a coin block here or a heater. Uh, both works, I think, and then more breadcrumbs. Okay, I feel like this is a good place to end this room. So let's put things like this, put the terrain down, and there's gonna be a door here that leads to the same room. Not the same room, this leads to another room. Uh, time for door. One, two, three. There you go. Next room is gonna be this. Let me actually save this and give it a little bit of test. Boop. And boop. There we go. There's the checkpoint. Yeah. And then we do this, and then the urchins are gonna come up, and then we swim, and then. Isn't there supposed to be a Nautilus here? What the hell happened? Anyway, bridge collapse, urchins float, we go down, say hello to Nautilus, and then we're gonna do this. Wait. Oh, I'm a dumbass. I forgot that signals don't send diagonally, which I have to fix it by either placing, just placing them on the bridge or um, 
Actually, just, yeah, just do that. Alternatively, we could also put signal on the wall, but both of them works, and I'm gonna do it this way. You know what? Let's not do it this way. It's gonna block the path of the urchin, so let's do this. So it sends signal. It carries signal, but doesn't do anything else. Let's save. Yeah, almost stuck in the wall, yeah. I'm very convinced that the Nautilus just is in a place that could despawn very easily. I gotta fix that. Why another player has to run away. Swim away, rather. And after that, you get to reach the next room. Which doesn't link to the door yet. And it doesn't even exist. Yeah, I placed I placed a Nautilus here. Why, why, why do you not appear? I guess I guess with the way the screen is moving down, it kind of despawns very easily. I'm gonna put it on the ground, just on the ground. See how that works out. And I think it's time to move on to the next room. You know what? Um, secret area time. Oh, secret. Area time, you hear me? So what I'm gonna do is to create a secret kind of area here And what it's gonna contain is a gem Boop, like so, and then we're gonna place another door here Like that So my plan is, there's gonna be a secret door in the next room that leads to this one but when player make their way down this room, they will already see this, so there's a kind of hint that this thing exists and they should be looking for a hidden door. So just a little designing thing here. So in this room, I think we make our way back to the surface. I have no idea how to lay this out, but I'm gonna just make random shapes and hope that it works. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> Alright. Let me borrow water from this room and I'm gonna fill this in. As well as water from this room. Fill this out, fill this in, and then gonna put the door down. This uh, parameter just signifies the it just signifies the texture that the door is gonna use, which uh, it's gonna use a specific texture that I made for this level, uh, just so you know. Anyway, so player makes their way back to the surface, and um, what do I do here? <laughs> no idea. There's gonna be nothing here, but I'm gonna put something here, just for the sake of it, having something here to look at. Maybe not give it too much of an emphasis. Or actually, alternatively, let's put a hidden lily here. Alright, uh, I think they're in place and the collision is right. Let's link the door. I don't know why this is in the second layer, but it is. I place it there. Now it's linked. I really, yeah, I really just make an entire tool just for linking doors. It definitely makes my job easier, but it's kind of it's kind of excessive <laughs> to take up a single tool slot for this general purpose. But anyway, in this section, I'm gonna put down a little Susie here, maybe one or two urchins, because um, why the hell not? What can we do here? Hmm. That is a very good question. I'm actually gonna. Do more water, watery stuff, but um, there's gonna, there's not gonna be a sea floor kind of thing because that can make it more dangerous, I guess. Actually, wait, I don't know what the hell do I want to do with my life and with this level. You know what? I'm going to make sea floors, but I'm going to make a, make it. Uh, a huge pain to 
to walk under it or at least entering the sea floor I want it to be kind of like um, it's an obligation to walk above the sea level I don't know why I use the word sea level this isn't the ocean I think this is just supposed to be a grotto I guess we're gonna basically boom boom it's gonna be hell for you to be in there you're not supposed to go down there but if you wish to challenge yourself you can do it the intended way to get through this section is through other means such as platforming on these lily pads actually maybe not that much lily pads and then i'm going to do i'm going to do something evil it's gym time it's always gym time if you waste your jump at some point Jim is gonna jump to this platform which hinders your progress but if you spot the gym right away and this is probably not gonna be an issue but just gonna put it out here for a nice little challenge I also feel like the second checkpoint should be placed here like that and then maybe a little breathing room before this challenge happens a little bit of place to collect coins as well as health yeah and with this dangerous section I feel like I should put the hidden door that leads to a gem here so I'm gonna place it here gonna link it to this place yeah right now it's very exposed but I will try to hit it I'm gonna use this uh, exact uh, texture I use this for this purpose actually and I'm gonna actually place the water down always forgot to do that and yeah that's it I'm gonna place a few placeholder terrain so the camera can stretch here because we're gonna start another test just quickly make our way down this room and nice the Nautilus is finally appearing you filthy little lazy little guy you naughty little nautilus i'm sorry for that joke and then the player make the escape i'm gonna see if i can fit through oh 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 i did it guys i'm a gamer but anyway the point is there's um ah why are you here the players can see the gem down there and it's gonna make their sus make them suspect that there's something maybe they missed or something they haven't seen yet and here is the checkpoint let me grab some health and yeah oh god hmm it appears that my trap does not appear to be working i kind of have no idea about my game if you could not tell i don't even know jim's jump range i should be ashamed of myself anyway everything should be closed together and um let me see if this works. I hope it does. Anyway. Oh, you see? You see? You see? And then, if you do this, it's gonna hinder your progress. Not really. I can fix this. Gonna make this lower, make this higher. Boom, fixed. And then we. Da da da. And then we here. We're here. And then. there no the obstacle is working as intended you see the point of this gym enemy is that i want you to be aware of your surrounding be aware of this little menace here because if you don't know yet you can't tongue, you cannot tongue him you you can't do that it's like the urchin oops so now this obstacle is in place i get to make the next area actually i might just call it here right now and uh, spend the rest of the day decorating a level and recording a time lapse of it maybe i'll do more designing tomorrow we'll see but i did just say i'm gonna do a snippet of it in video so it might not be on camera so it'll be the end 
of this uh, level designing session. I hope you enjoyed this. And that's the end of it. I don't expect many people to actually sit through this entire video, but if you are currently listening to this, you are awesome and consider subscribing because that would be really nice. Uh, I like seeing numbers go up that, make, that makes my brain releases dopamine and that's very awesome. I have no idea why I'm going with this, but uh, I'm very bad with outros, so uh, bye.